Hello, everyone. I'm Yan Jia from Xidian University. This is a joint work with students and professors at University of Chinese Academy of Sciences and Indiana University Bloomington. Today, IoT devices is getting more and more popular. The popularity of Internet of Things and the demands for their convenient deployment give rise to a new type of service called IoT Cloud Platform. Today, many leading cloud service providers and IoT device manufacturers provide such cloud services. At the center of these services is the IoT cloud that mediates the communication between IoT devices and apps of users. Through the cloud, the user sends control messages to the device, for example, to lock a smart door and get information back from the device. The cloud provider offers SDKs that implement certain messaging protocols. IoT manufacturers integrate the SDK into their devices and mobile apps for communication through the cloud. In particular, MQTT is one of the most popular protocols adopted by IoT clouds, including Amazon Web Service, Microsoft, IBM, and so on. MQTT is an application layer protocol and runs over TCP IP or other ordered bidirectional connections like WebSocket. MQTT is known for lightweight design and thus is well suited for supporting the IoT ecosystem. For example, when created in 1999, it was used to monitor oil pipeline by satellite link. Today, it also works in a range of home automation scenarios. However, unfortunately, MQTT is not designed to operate in an adversarial environment. More specifically, the protocol has almost no built-in mechanisms for authentication and authorization, forcing the cloud platform providers to develop their own safeguards. Before introducing the safeguards of IoT cloud platforms, let's see how MQTT works in IoT environment. Imagine you have a smart air conditioner that can be controlled by a mobile app. First of all, the MQTT session begins with the connect message from the clients. Then, the client subscribes to a topic for receiving messages. For example, the Air conditioner subscribes to its topic identified by device ID slash command. The cloud later will forward all message published to this topic to the device. So the app can publish messages directly on this topic to the cloud, and the cloud publishes this message to the air conditioner. Similarly, if the app wants to receive messages from the device, it subscribes to the topic device ID slash status. And the cloud will forward the device information to the app based on the topic, for example, the room temperature. To protect the communication involving sensitive IoT devices, an IoT cloud often has its custom security mechanism. For example, in AWS IoT, when MQTT connection goes through TLS connections, the cloud checks the certificate of client. Only the authenticated clients can start MQTT session. The IoT cloud platform aims to ensure that each user can only send commands to and receive messages from the devices and the person is allowed to use. For example, the plug can only access its own topic, but cannot publish messages to the topic of a lock. The cloud will block unauthorized messages from clients. However, given the complexity in customizing the general purpose protocol to work in diverse IoT application and scenarios, effective protection of its communication is challenging. We did a systematic security study on eight leading IoT clouds in the world who using MQTT. 
We believe the attacker can register user accounts with the IoT device manufacturers and IoT clouds. Sometimes the attacker can be granted a temporary access to the devices. For example, in hotels equipped with IoT devices, different guests may share the same smart lock. First, let's see whether the messages in MQTT are protected well by the IoT cloud platforms. Based on the MQTT specification, the client can register with the broker a special view message for a topic, which is carried in connect message. Once the client is accidentally disconnected, the broker will publish the view message to all clients that subscribed to the topic. Like other MQTT messages, view message can include either control commands or just the text. However, this exception handling feature was not meant to work in the adversarial environment, especially when the access right on a device is transferred from one party to another. In this case, a malicious X user can register a real message to trigger it later when he no longer has the access privilege. For example, a malicious Airbnb guest can register a real message when he has access to the smart lock. Later, he checks out and the new user comes in. The right of the previous guest will be revoked by the cloud, so the attacker can't publish to the topic of the lock again. However, the attacker's view message will still be issued as soon as his client is disconnected from the server. Because this message was accepted and entitled to deliver as designed by MQTT. In this way, he can decide when to unlock the dock in the above example by choosing the right time to go offline. The second attack is about the faults in managing MQTT sessions. MQTT lifecycle session begins after the cloud accepts a connect message from the client. And once the client subscribes to a topic, the server will maintain a subscription session. The messages on that topic will be continuously sent to the device until the device sent an unsubscribe message. MQTT specification suggests that the server should authorize the particular actions of the clients. So, with this guidance in place, IoT platforms typically enforce a security policy to govern the client's operations. For example, when a device is reset to completely remove all permissions of a previous user, in any established session, the user's client becomes no longer permitted to take any proactive actions, such as subscribing to the device topic. However, we found that the MQTT specification provides no guidance in updating session states in response to the client's privilege chain. So, if the attacker just keeps the connection, the subscription session will be maintained by the server, and the server will still push messages from that topic to the attacker, so the device is used by another user. Later, I will show you the consequence of leaking IoT device messages. Next, let's see the risks in MQTT identity. First, let's review how the cloud authenticates clients. IoT cloud platforms authenticate their MQTT clients using their own platform identities. For example, AWS Cloud checks the device certificate when the client starts an SSL connection. After authenticated, the client sends MQTT connect and starts the MQTT session. In the meantime, each client is also identified by its protocol identity, client ID, that is carried in the first connect message. In MQTT, the client ID identifies the client to the server. Each client connecting to the server has a unique client ID. If two clients claim the same client ID, the later one will kick the connected one off. In an adversarial environment, one would expect that related MQTT protocol states and transitions are protected by proper 
authentication involving client ID, and the token is kept a secret. However, our research shows that such protection is actually not in place over major IoT cloud platforms. From the vendor's view, IBM suggests that MAC address can be used as a client ID because it is unique per device. Some vendors prefer serial number, which is also unique. However, MAC address and serial number are not secrets, they are guessable. Additionally, the relations between platform identity and client ID can be complicated. A one account can have multiple devices, for example, smartphone and iPad, each with their own client ID. We found IoT clouds lack sufficient authentication regarding client ID. Therefore, with one legitimate account, the attacker can change the client ID in connect message to the same one of other devices, kicking them offline. In real world, we identified 20,000 client IDs of iRobot devices in use, and on AWS IoT, we confirmed that one platform identity can start multiple connections. So, with a little platform identities, the attacker could launch denial of service attack in large scale. Due to the lack of guidance and the unique adversarial environment of IoT, the necessity to protect sessions and the client ID are unclear to IoT clouds. However, even for topics that are clearly known to protect, their protection is inadequate. In real world, an IoT cloud manages millions of devices and users. We found that an IoT cloud took insecure shortcuts in protecting MQTT topics. The cloud treats topics as random secrets. Anyone knows the topic can subscribe to the device topic. However, in the adversary environment of IoT, an X user can easily know the topic. Also, we found IoT clouds in real world fail to properly authorize subscriptions of MQTT topics with wildcards. By simply subscribing to the hashtag, an attacker can receive all messages from all topics. In practice, such problems are found to be highly damaging to both security and privacy. With IRB approval, we analyzed MQTT messages from a popular IoT cloud platform. We found messages include PRI, like an email address, information captured by the device, for example, uh, temperature, and uh, even cohabitant relation. When observing the device status for a long time, an attacker is able to infer the user living habit. This figure shows the three-week status of an air conditioner. Red points mean the air conditioner is working. You can see from the figure, it starts at 6 a.m. and ends in midnight. On Thursday, the air conditioner was shut down the whole day, which means that the host may be not at home that day. In our measurement study, we found that the security mechanisms of most leading IoT cloud platforms failed to protect the entities and the states of the MQTT. Due to the limited time, detailed measurement results, and the more interesting attack cases can be found in our paper. The key to the protection is to add the missing security model and the design principles that govern the critical protocol entities. First, the sensitive entity like client ID should be authorized carefully along with the platform layer identity. Second, in the presence of an adversarial environment, where objects are expected to have privileged changes, session states should accordingly keep updated. Third, to secure the messages in a general messaging protocol, we proposed a message-oriented usage control model. The core idea of the model is simple. Briefly speaking, when a message is read by a client, the system should consider the receiver's security requirements. For example, whether the lock should accept the message from an X user. Uh, please see our paper for more details about the mitigation methods. 
The most important lesson learned from our study is the caution one should take when applying a common purpose protocol to the domains that may involve malicious parties. In such a case, both the scenarios the protocol does not cover and the individual states of the protocol need to be evaluated to identify the gap what the protocol can protect and what needs to be protected. More specifically, in the use of general messaging protocols for IoT device user communication, our study highlights that not only should the client ID and its related states be safeguarded with proper authentication and authorization, but also the whole revocation process, which is security critical, needs to be added to the protocol with protection in place. Um, mitigating such flaws requires a joint effort for both the protocol designer and the IoT manufacturer. And that's all. Thank you.